a true leader for the every way woman. We're thrilled to have Marta Cornell, the president of the Pasadena League of Women's Voters. Thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me. Well, it's a pleasure to be here with all of you. Thank you for everything you do with the Women's League. Can you explain to us your role in that? Yes. I, let me tell you a little about the League of Women Voters. It is a national organization, and it started out as the women's suffrage movement about in 1870. And then when the country got the vote, women got the vote, and you know that was not an easy struggle. It didn't happen overnight. Men did not wake up one morning and say, oh, we've done the wrong thing. Let's give women the vote. They still don't wake up. <laughs> <laughs> so we still had to do women went to jail they were force fed mm -hmm. it was very very awful what for us to get but in 1920 then the name changed to the League of Women Voters but I want to be clear we have three men on our board men are welcome <laughs> you know the change happens when you get them on board right? yes. yeah when you get the other side no yes. matter what it is they yes. like to be included they <laughs> like to be included and there are many, you know, so we welcome them in our membership. And the only reason we have not changed the title is because it's a brand name now, a very respected brand name. And what's it doing now? Fast All forward right. to 2013. Okay. The League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan political organization. So we do not oppose or support candidates. Our thrust, our interest is in issues, so we stay in that. And as president, we're really careful and we guard that um, integrity. And so as president, for example, I cannot support with a sign on my lawn someone running for school board. I cannot give one dollar to any campaign to just, we just don't do money well, in that way. Speaking of campaigns fresh off the 2012 election, uh -huh. what issues are really in the forefront for women in politics now? All right. There are a couple of things now. Let me just finish about the league. We do education mm -hmm. and we do advocacy. Mm -hmm. So we put on programs that are free to the public. Uh, we'll pick a particular issue. And we'll have, like, we're going to be, an upcoming one will be on charter schools and on private schools. And we'll represent both sides. And we pride ourselves in education. We do not take sides. Then, another thing that we do separate completely from that is advocacy, where we do take a stand. And so, bringing you up to date, we have a definite stand on getting a bill through Congress, Equal Pay, for equal work. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So then we have not gotten that la absolutely. yet, ladies. So that's well, what coming can up. we as women do to make sure we are getting that equal pay, regardless of the bill? Sorry. All right. Well, first, be an advocate politically. Write to your congressperson, your senator. Organize. Does the joint. Lake, do you help with that? I was just yes. saying. Yeah. The lake provides yes. all that information. Yes. But why does this have to be legislated? Why are there other ways? Because there's going to be people who are going to say, you know, that's not the job of a legislator. I mean, why can't companies mm -hmm. have the right to mm -hmm. pay as they want? Mm -hmm. Are there other ways to do it? I don't know if you don't have the legal backing if women can do it, and I think that that kind of reasoning. Is, is not worthy of 2013. I mean, if you are doing equal work, you deserve equal pay. But it doesn't help, or it doesn't hurt, rather, to have the law behind you. Exactly. Right. That exactly. can only benefit us. Right. And knowing, I think, if you're in the situation, knowing what a man is doing is get has gotten in the past for that and confronting your employer with that in, in a way and just saying, you know, I know so-and-so is making $5,000 more than I am, just as an arbitrary example, and I would like to know. But if a law was a law, they wouldn't, they wouldn't even be an issue. Exactly. So That's what that you want to get. that would cut out all of that kind of negotiation, and, and it just doesn't feel good. No, you know, it doesn't. It's, it's not It doesn't right. make for a good work environment. But now, now, what do they say? You know, some of the arguments are like, well, you know, men don't go on maternity leave. They, there is now paternity leave. Mm -hmm. A lot of companies mm -hmm. are offering it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, is that something that should set us back in, on the dollar scale? I don't think so. Oh, absolutely, absolutely not. I mean, I read that, I read <laughs> that, that employers pay more for women's health care than they do men's, and I always wondered if that might skew salaries because employers thinking, I have to pay extra women for this money for this female for health care, therefore I don't want to pay as much for salary. I don't think that's what's going on, but I have read statistics that show that that's the case. And Well, I think well, women are intimidated in the first place by that salary question and equal rights to men, just as they're intimidated by politics and what can we do as women to make politics less intimidating because I hear the word politics and I think 
I don't want to deal with this. Well, they don't show up at meetings. I mean, as someone who's on a council for four terms, I can tell you it it's just a total imbalance with regards to male versus female in the room. And I don't understand the reason for that. Why are pe women just not feeling empowered to show up for meetings? Yeah, and that's a huge their thing. Voice? And yeah. you were also saying that you monitor situations and bills that have fallen through the wayside, that haven't been renewed, very important important domestic violence mm -hmm. bill. Um, so it seems like the league keeps kind of an eye out for yes. everything and kind yes. of monitors that political situation and where the strengths and where the weaknesses are lying. You know, when I when you talk about women's issues, we are 51% of the population. That's not a special interest group. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, mm. you know <laughs> and, and when you just see men, and we saw this in the last election, making comments about women's reproductive system, women's health, things like that. When well, you have ladies, a whole panel discussing women's health and there's no women there. Exactly. <laughs> that a lot of times exactly. there's no doctors. <laughs> exactly. And the point is, you know, if you're not at the table, we're probably on the menu. So, <laughs> exactly. I well mean, said. But so how, do we, how do we get women empowered? How, what are you All right. That is, now, now studies show that if a man and a woman run for an office, there is no gender prejudice. People don't say, oh, she's a woman and she can't do it. They'll decide on the merits. Not necessarily elect the woman, but it will be on the merits of what they offer, their experience and their ability. However, what is very difficult is getting women to run. Mm -hmm. Still, there is in the culture, and when you get into politics, and once you get You'll find more if it's about the school board or something where it's close They're to home. Close to home, Maybe. domestic violence, right. yes. with, abortion, adoption. These, well, they I say that women candidates uh, emphasize Georgia. social issues mm -hmm. more than male mm -hmm. candidates. Mm -hmm. I assume that's your experience as well. well. I'm not always sure. I think that depends on where the, what the jurisdiction is and what the what mm -hmm. the particular issues on. I mean, we have Hillary Clinton as an example of a woman in, and we had Condoleezza Rice. Yeah. And so those are two women in international relationships and they they stuck to that. Mm -hmm. And they were knowledgeable and, and they, were they had strong. a voice and That's they were true. strong. Well, thank you for being on the show and having a voice and being a strong leader. You're really an inspiration and we admire that. We'd love to have you on the show. It was a pleasure. Well, thank you so much for asking. <laughs> me thank you. Absolutely. For more information, visit everywaywoman.com. We'll be right back.